Hello, hopefully you enjoyed this upcoming performance from National E-Theatre. If you do, uh, well, all of the artists taking part in this project, writers, directors and actors, are self-employed and currently unemployed thanks to the coronavirus outbreak here in the UK. And so if you want to support them, you can do so by visiting the links, which will be in the description below the video, and you can donate as little or as much as you want to and feel able to. Uh, that money will all be distributed evenly among all the artists taking part. If you can't do that, at the very least, we'd love you to be able to share the videos on your social media accounts, on Facebook, on Twitter, with a friend who might be missing their weekly trip to the theatre. Anyone you think might enjoy it, uh, that is also a massive help. You can follow the project and uh, be alerted to any upcoming videos by following the channel, uh, which you can do so up above, or you can follow us on Twitter on at National E Theatre. Thank you for watching and sit back now and enjoy the show. Can you hear that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you speak? One, two, one, two, one, two. The British public have every reason to be fiercely proud and protective over the National Health Service, our NHS. Now, I want to make it clear that in my role as Chief Executive, I believe without reservation in our core principles that we meet the needs of everyone, that our services be free at the point of delivery, and that we be based on clinical need and not ability to pay. As the first female chief executive of the National Health Service, I have been honoured with the responsibility of not only leading this institution, but preserving its legacy. The recent criticism that has been levied at me is not wholly unwarranted, and I do offer a full retraction of the comments I made, especially if they cause defence, which wasn't my intention. As a leader of an institution that prides itself on accessibility and inclusion, it is my duty to be a vocal supporter of the aims of the NHS. As a private individual, I am responsible for the words I use and the actions I take. And it is therefore with deep shame and regret that I acknowledge my actions yesterday at Homerton Hospital Accident and Emergency. I was uncooperative with the staff at Homerton Hospital, especially Dr Sangupta, and I understand how my comments could have been deemed hurtful and deeply offensive. The only thing that I can offer, the only thing that I can offer, can you, I don't need you in my ear because I have the speech right there and you're all just looking at me. I just, I think, saying sorry, it just, it sounds so defeatist, okay? Yeah, I could, I should have been more tactful, but I was stressed. Okay? Stressed. This isn't racist, okay? I'm not racist. I wrote a paper on the value and importance of skilled foreign nationals in the NHS, okay? I wrote a paper and it said the avert an insidious racial bias that is prevalent in the National Health Service is something that I am fundamentally opposed to. Do I sound racist? My name could have been Kumar, <laughs> but it wasn't. Well, I'm not gonna forget it now, am I? And she did have a funny bedside manner. She told me to get out of the way. Yes, I was in the way, but I didn't know what to do, okay? I wanted to be with Sarah. I want to be with Sarah now. What am I doing? I need to be political, Louise, right now. I need to be the chief executive of the National Bloody Health Service. It's just as she hadn't have tweeted. Okay, can I, can I ask, why is it these days that when someone feels maligned, they decide that the best course of action is to defame someone else? Why do people need the whole frickin' world 
to validate them. Why? Why do people need to employ social media thuggery to feel like they've been heard? Because if she hadn't, I could be with Sarah now. I should be with Sarah now. I... <sighs> but I can't be, can I? Well, I could be. No, but I can't be because I asked a brown doctor where she got her medicine degree from and then I called her Dr. Kumar, even though her name is Sankupta. For Christ's sake, Louise, they do actually have name badges. And look, I don't think that all Indian people are called Kumar, okay? That's ridiculous. Yes, I said it, but I didn't mean it, okay? I should be with Sarah now. Sarah's going to be fine. She's going to be okay. It's just when I think of her little face, my head starts to go numb. Fuck. She just looks so small and frightened. We were, we were both scared. But James has us under control. He's a good father. The better parent. He's just so attentive. He's more available. He's more attentive. He is. I know it, I'm hopelessly ineffective. I did say to her, don't climb the tree. It's just she's always climbing trees, you know? She, she bloody loves trees, okay? And that she's so good at it. She really is. She can actually brachiate. She can, I've seen her do it. She's fearless. Not like me. My little clump of love, heart, muscle. I don't have time for this. I don't. I have got to get out of this shower of shit. If you say that I'm a racist, a pig, a monster, well let me be monstrous. A mother's instinct, that's not something to be messed with. Okay, ah, oh, but I'm not a mother. I am a public figure, a political figure. And political women, we're not meant to wear our emotions on our sleeves. No, political women, we are meant to wear pantsuits and have the emotional capabilities of a Lego person fixed, rooted. We are meant to be images that you can trust, but I'm a mum. No, you are an image. So you censor, 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 brand, brand, brand. Am I on brand? Am I? Is this what you wanted? Is this on brand for you? <sighs> Shit, can't. This is not my fault, can you? I need to get back on brand. Otherwise, I will lose everything. An apology. Okay, not that, but an actual apology. That is an admission of guilt. And in this business, if I admit that I have done something wrong, then they will gag me. I can't stand that. I cannot stand that for decades I edit, I curate, I prune my entire life to fit your mold. And then one question, one moment, and It's as if Rembrandt, yeah? He spends three years painting a masterpiece and then one night he gets drunk and he slips, he just slips. And so there is this one tiny little incongruous brushstroke. And my question to you is does that undo the rest of the majesty of the work? Because it's all still there, isn't it? The years, the study, the pain, it is all still there. It's just all you're looking at is that one tiny little fucking drunken brushstroke. Can you just think about what it is that I've achieved? Because that matters. What I do, what I have done, it is more important than this entire charade. This is irrelevant. Yeah. 
in my work, I have to be brutal. Sometimes I have to be morally dubious sometimes. This time, one time I chose to mother instead of making policy and that does not make me a failure. I refuse to be a failure because I chose to mother. She said to me, mum, can I climb this tree? And to be fair, I said no, because quite frankly, I didn't think that we had time because we had to be at my mother's for lunch. My mother, who had already called twice that day, once in the morning, to confirm and then again to check on our ETA. Why does she do that? Probably because she gets to see us about three times a year. But I wanted to give James space to work, to write a book on the geological formations and the Hampshire Basin. Oh, fuck, he's boring. Oh, my God. How did I end up marrying such a boring man? He, he's lovely, he's very nice, and he, he's so supportive of me and of my work and stuff. He's really fucking boring. He does the lion's share of the parenting. So she, she was begging me to climb this tree, and then I had to take a call from, um, oh shit, fuck, what's the name? The, the name of the new assistant. Oh, fuck, Paul! Fuck, Paul! I took a call from Paul. He's such a potato of a man. It wasn't even an urgent matter. It was some doctor wanting to get litigious because of their dismissal. I mean, as if that's some kind of revelation. Was I neglecting Sarah because of a call from potato Paul? No, no. I was distracted by my work. And then while I was distracted, she, she, um, this thing, it was behemoth. It was one of those trees. If you scan up it from the ground, it doesn't look like it has any branches for what appears to be a mile. And then it suddenly sprawls out over the top of you. And I looked up when I was so scared because she was just so high. Her head hit the root of the tree and it swelled up so much it looked like she had a helmet on. And she just lay there. She wasn't moving, she wasn't brief. Not my Sarah. And I vomited on myself as I, I ran to her and I tried to pick her up, but it felt like there was somehow more of her. It was like I was picking up littered clothing and I know I shouldn't have moved her, okay? I, sh no. <laughs> I shouldn't have moved her, but I wasn't thinking properly, okay? But I knew that there was a hospital nearby. I knew that because that is my job. Because that is what I do. I had raised the money. I had approved the plans for. I had cut the ribbon at the opening of Homerton Hospital's new accident and emergency ward. And yes, then. All right. I come in. Come in. I want to say to this woman, that one moment, one blip, it does not define a career or an entire person, does it? I want to say, I know what it feels like to be a minority. I am a woman in senior policy making. Dr. Priyasha Sengupta, you are a consultant. You are a woman who has made it to the very top of your field. And yes, I I should have, I should have backed.
a marginalised woman who is trying to save my own daughter's life. And by the very definition of unconscious bias. I am so The only thing that I can offer, the only thing that I can offer is that my comments were not intended to cause offence or marginalise anyone. I am dedicated to standing against discrimination in all its insidious forms within our public institutions. I commend Dr Priyasha Sangupta on her great work to date and I ask that she join me in my efforts to create an ethnically diverse and gender equal workforce. Thank you. <laughs>